So I'm in this grove of silver birch. It goes all the way along down here, through here. I've planted cherries in here. So these are some cherry trees. And then the silver birch and spindle. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm taking off the stays to allow the trees to grow because the stays are beginning to rub the trees. You can see right there. And over here, this one was really bad. It was really rubbing the tree raw. So they have been planted now three years. This is their third year. And they're really beginning to take off. Look, the spindle is about to bloom. All this spindle is great for pollinators in the spring when the blooms come out. And then the seed, so many birds love the spindle seeds. So it's gonna be great when uh, that comes out. See, I've gotta take these off. This tree is feeling rather feeble. So hopefully it will, um, when I take this off, it'll feel better. But that's what I'm doing this morning is a start on this before um, I go on to a Zwartlas sheep uh, event down in, um, where is it? In Wexford. So while I have the time, I'm gonna be taking these off of the silver birch. And it's actually quite, bear, bear, how did you get in there? The fence is supposed to be electric. How did you get in? I had to jump the fence. I guess Bear has a very thick coat. You're staying out because you don't want to get electrocuted. I know. Anyway, there's apple trees behind those fences. So this area I graze sometimes, obviously not recently, but the, those like chicken cages are protecting some apple trees. And you can see one apple tree you see it's blooming right there, surrounded by nettles. So I've got to, and look at all the dandelions, huge dandelions and dock leaves and hogweed. So I've got to um, keep working at what I'm doing and go on from there. These are all the same kind of silver birch. But what's interesting is to see the baby bark. This is the baby bark of the silver birch. It's kind of a reddy color. When it's even younger, like here, it's kind of a, a black color. But then when it matures to a certain age, it goes like this, which is what I love. The beautiful paper birch silver birch. So that one is getting close to start turning. You can see the, it's beginning to turn here. So next year, this tree will start looking like that tree. If I walk through here, you can see the cherry trees. The cherry trees don't have stays because they were seedlings that I planted as tiny babies and they just took off. Here's another cherry tree. And yes, I've planted them all close together. Look, this spindle is flowering. Look at that. They have a very plain flower, but the most magnificent uh, fruit and berries. This is not a cherry, this is a scrub plum. This is a sucker root from that tree right there. But these flower very early in the spring. So I'm gonna let that go and do its thing as well. But here you can see a young silver birch with its ready coated trunk. And then here you can see a more, more mature one. Interestingly, all of these silver birch in this whole thing were all planted at the same time. It's just their placements are different. 
So you can see this one looks beautiful. Look at this trunk here. That one's going to turn this year, but look at that. You can see this is bursting out of its baby clothes. So this is like a teenager. It's bursting out of its baby clothes and exposing its um, true nature, its white silver birch bark. It's kind of fun watching them burst out of their baby clothes. So this one will hopefully do that later this year. You can see it gets paler and paler and then it starts busting out of its baby clothes. <laughs> so the other thing that I've been doing amongst the silver birch and spindle plantation is when I'm weeding the garden, planting oxide daisies. So you can see there's oxide daisies here and then also planting bluebells. Yes, there's hogsweed, thistles, etc. But I'm planting bluebells as well. So that in the spring, when the trees are much higher and the bark is silvered, you'll have the silver of the silver birch and then a carpet of bluebells underneath. At least that's the plan. Still gotta go. This tree sadly died. It's the only one so far. It's the only tree that we planted in this stretch that died. Oh, and we have a gap here because there's power cables and you don't want trees to grow where into the power cables. So I want to plant in here. I will plant low things um, uh, that like I might get some lilacs or I don't know, I've got to think what I want to plant here, but it has to be something that won't get that high, is not poisonous to sheep, and is beneficial in some way, and can grow above the grass. So that's, uh, so this area, I've got to think what I'm going to plant. I'd love to plant lilacs, because I love lilacs, and they smell so heavenly and perfume the air. But we'll see. And. I don't know how oven mitt got in because the fence is supposed to be electric, but he's curled up underneath this spindle. Isn't that right? Hey, kitty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I've got to keep working at taking these folks down. This one's already out. Something's wrong with this tree because half of its branches aren't great. So it has a wound right there. Hopefully it'll carry on and not affect it, um, but we'll see. So working away slowly but surely at establishing good biodiversity. Look at the bluebells. Those are just planted this year. Oh, look, that's a baby cherry tree right there. That's a cherry tree that's planted itself, sown itself. So I'll leave it for the time being. As long as it's not directly underneath the power cables, you never know what uh, it might look like something nice. This spindle, funnily enough, has very few flowers. Interesting. This is another cherry tree that we sowed here. Here's another silver birch. Okay, I've got only a few more left to go.